What's the story on this new Cubitron 2 grit? If you look at the evolution of microfracturing grit, uh, we had Norton SG, we had Cubitron number one, we've had Quantum, we've had various microfracturing grits that have this very small microstructure. And the next one to come out is something called Cubitron 2. Uh, this came out a while back and it was kind of unique looking. A uh, little bit, little triangles, little thick triangles, uh, as you see in this picture that I pulled off of their web page. So I was very intrigued by it um, about a year and a half ago, and I went and did a bunch of tests on my own on their coated abrasive to see how it worked in coated abrasive or sandpaper style abrasive. And this is what I found. So normal ceramic grit, normal grits in a grinding wheel or in sandpaper, just a bunch of little rocks. Little rocks, you grind, they become dull, and eventually they just don't cut anymore. The Cubitron 2 grit is still aluminum oxide. Uh, it's still ceramic, microfracturing allegedly uh, aluminum oxide. But the difference is the grits are shaped like, eh, like little tortilla chips, but they're kind of like thicker than tortilla chips. So it's sort of the tortilla chip, the thick tortilla chip grit. And here's what they do. They get those little thick tortilla chips. Maybe it looks something like this. And they get these little tortilla chips, but in coated abrasives, they manage to stand them all on end. So we get all these little tortilla chips, and they manage to get these guys standing on end like little ducks in a row and the idea is these guys are going to cut real well. Now when this came out, I'm kind of cynical about new grinding products and I said, well, it looks kind of cool, but are you really going to be able to get a good surface finish out of that? Are you really going to be able to get reasonable wheel wear? Or is the thing just going to break away real quick and become dull? So I did some tests and this is what I found. What I did was I took a good old angle grinder, got myself a welder, a buddy of mine who's a welder, and this is not a, a disc for welding, but you get the idea. It's a coated abrasive disc. We got an angle grinder, and we just started grinding segments. And we did it with the Cubitron 2 disc, and we did it with the regular aluminum oxide discs. And what we found was we ground with the regular, regular aluminum oxide disc, and the first guy cut, second guy cut a little slower, third guy cut a little bit longer to remove material, Fourth guy took a little longer, fifth guy took a long time, and then finally he wouldn't cut anymore. We threw him away. You can see the results behind me here. We did it again with the, uh, with the Cubitron 2, and the thing just cut real well at first. And then the next one cut real well, and the next one cut real well. And it just kept cutting and cutting and cutting. And it was kind of the energizer buddy, bunny of the uh, disc world. So the first one, the regular disc, we had one, two, three, four, five, about seven, uh, seven little segments that we had. And after seven segments, the guy just wouldn't cut anymore. We had to toss the disc. Cubitron 2 disc, we stuck them on there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty, thirty, forty. The guy was still cutting. And what was kind of amazing was it didn't, uh, then things didn't slow down. The guy just kept cutting and cutting and cutting at the same rate. Finally, it was getting late in the day and we got kind of tired. Previously, we had cut, took a break, measured, cut, took a break, measured. At the end of the test, we were kind of getting sick of doing the test, so I just told my welder buddy, hey, just grind away until you're done. Kept grinding, grinding, grinding. Finally, the disc failed at around segment number 70. And it might have even gone longer if we hadn't done that last one all at once and let them, given them time to cool down. That was for the 80 mesh. Then we repeated it for the 36 mesh. Here we did it with two discs. Two discs ran out after about 10 segments. And the Cubitron 2 just kept going and going and going. Finally, it was late in the day. Uh, and we just said, I don't want to stay here till 5 in the morning. So we just quit. Not a real scientific approach to the test, just to quit. Basically, your failure criteria is you just get tired, but that's what we did. Now, what's going on with this stuff? So here's a picture that we took of our Cubitron 2 disc, 
And here we have all those little guys standing up on end, ready to do some cutting. We can see the bond material that's kind of enveloped the whole thing. The regular disc, after we ground and we were done, this is what the grits look like. We got flat grits, flat dull grits, and that's why the guy just doesn't cut any well, cut anymore. Now with Cubitron, the idea is, well, the guy's going to self-sharpen and all those little triangles are going to break away in little pieces. At least that's the way people claim it works. But here's what we found out. Here's our disc after he's been grinding for quite a while, and all our little triangles are becoming dull. They're becoming dull and they're becoming flat. There's a nice dull grit. Now, any other grit, and pretty much every single grit and every single grinding operation and any type of uh, material, when the grits become dull, everything goes bad and they just don't cut anymore. The crazy thing about the Cubitron 2 was the guys became dull, but they still cut just fine. And they kept becoming duller and duller, and they continued to cut, which is pretty unique in, in terms of aluminum oxide grits, or any grit really. And we think it has something to do with the rake angle. So most grinding wheels, or all grinding wheels, when you look at the rake angle of these little guys, they have what are called negative rake angles. Negative rake angles are just not conducive to cutting. They're just not conducive to removing material. They generate a lot of forces. Then they become dull, and uh, we have a dull area. And those guys sure don't cut. They just rub and rub and rub. Now the Cubitron guys, their rake angle is something like 90 degrees, or depending on your orientation. Now they became dull, but they were still able to cut. So what it appears is that these guys are behaving kind of like a, an insert on a lathe, where you've got that near 90 degree rake angle, but we're able to form that chip above or in front of the grit. That's what we think is going on. Okay. The end result, though, is the damn thing just kept going and going and going and going and going, at least for the test that we did it on. Now, seems to be doing pretty well on coated abrasives. Now they've recently introduced it on bonded abrasives. Bonded abrasive means kind of like this guy. We don't have a single layer of abrasive like we had in the sandpaper style coated abrasive. Now we've got lots and lots of abrasives all throughout the wheel. Now that we have lots and lots of abrasives, all our little Cubitron triangles, our tortilla chips, are now no longer going to be standing on end. They're going to be randomly distributed. Some are going to be like this. Some are going to be like that. Some are going to be like that. Some are going to be like that. Some are going to be flat, kind of like the picture we see here. So how are these guys going to behave? Well, it's still early days. The jury's still out. But it's looking like it's doing pretty well. Maybe not as well as the coated abrasives, but in spite of the fact that these guys are all random, which isn't quite as conducive as the, uh, all those guys standing on edge, my customers' early reports say, yeah, the stuff still seems to work pretty well. Not quite as well as encoded abrasives, but seems to work pretty well. But like I said, it's still early days. We don't know yet. We still need to do some testing. We still need to see what's going on in the field to see how this stuff really holds up.